would have thought about it. I'd have brought a loaded mortgage and shot him with that. Your brother hired me to defend him while he tried to prove your innocence. His arms busted. When we talk about top Western actors, we always take names like John Wayne, Richard Widmark, Henry Fonda, and Gary Cooper. But there was an underrated actor, James Coburn. His acting skills were great, but he was unlucky in his career. Yes, this is the story of James Coburn. His childhood was not good. he grown up during the Great Depression, where dreams are stifled by the weight of survival, and a young boy watches as his family's livelihood crumbles to dust. This is not just a story of success. It is a tale of resilience, love, and the relentless pursuit of passion in the face of overwhelming adversity. Join us as we explore the life of James Coburn. James Coburn was born James Harrison Coburn III on August 31, 1928, in Laurel, Nebraska, U.S. He was called James and Jimmy in his house. James's father was a junior painter in the Coburn Ford Motor Company, along with his father, Daniel D. Coburn. Coburn Motor Company went out of business during the Great Depression. No one could afford to buy a new automobile after the business failed. After the business failed, Jimmy's grandfather retired and his father packed up the family to California. By 1936, the family had moved to Compton, which is just south of Los Angeles. In Compton, James's father ran a gas station in Long Beach and went to elementary school in Compton. As James grew up and became a teen, he worked as a janitor and a ticket taker at a local movie theater. After completing high school, James attended junior college where he kept living at home in junior college. He earned an associate of arts degree. In 1950, James enrolled himself in the U.S. military where he was stationed in Texas. Initially, he, he was signed as a truck driver. As soon Army knew that he had a deep voice, he transferred to the local Army radio station where he worked as part-time disc jockey. Later, he transferred to Germany where he narrated Army training films. After finishing his service, he went back to Los Angeles and enrolled at Los Angeles City College to study acting. In college, he became friends with fellow would-be actor Robert Vaughn. James used to take part in school plays and studied acting under the actor Jeff Corey's acting workshop. After some time, Corey was banned from acting by the House Committee on taking part in American activities due to this. Corey couldn't find acting roles for himself, but he was able to teach. James managed to get his first stage production, Billy Budd, at the La Jolla Playhouse, where he performed alongside actor Vincent Price. This exposure allowed him to move to New York to study acting with the renowned coach Stella Adler. While in New York, he was chosen by the Remington Razor Company for a commercial, where he demonstrated shaving off an 11-day-old beard in just 60 seconds. He claimed he won the part over 12 other candidates because of his smile. James then made notable appearances on TV shows like Studio One and General Electric Theater. In 1958, he returned to Hollywood and made his appearances on weekly Western TV shows such as Wagon Train, The Rifleman, and some episodes of Bonanza after the year appeared in his first movie, Ride Lonesome, with other stars, Randolph Scott, Lee Van Cleef, Pernell Roberts. Also in 1959, James Coburn appeared in an episode of the TV show, Johnny Ringo. His co-star, Durant, praised Coburn as a true gentleman, noting that he was very different from the often flashy characters he played. Coburn was always courteous and never tried to overshadow others, which was uncommon in the film industry at that time. Earlier, in 1958, Coburn met Beverly Kelly, a dark-haired beauty. They got married on November 14, 1959, after a year of romance. At the time, James was 31 and Beverly was 19. Beverly had a two-year-old daughter named Lisa, whom James later referred to as, Always My Daughter. Within a year of his marriage, James Coburn starred in a TV series called Klondike, which was about the Alaskan gold rush. The show, featuring Coburn alongside Rath Taggart, ran for nine episodes and ended in 1961. While working on Klondike, Coburn's college friend Robert Vaughn informed him about a movie called The Magnificent Seven, which had a role still available. The film starred Charles Bronson, Steve McQueen, and others. Thanks to Vaughn's tip, Coburn landed the part of Brit, a skilled knife thrower. Although Coburn had only 11 lines in the film, The Magnificent Seven helped him become a major star. On the set of The Magnificent Seven, Coburn became friends with Steve McQueen, who was dealing with his difficult childhood. Coburn noted that only Charles Bronson had a comparable past. 
The following year, on May 22, 1961, James Coburn and his wife Beverly welcomed their son, James Hassan Coburn IV. Within a year of his son's birth, James Coburn appeared with Steve McQueen in the 1963 World War II film The Hill, about an American soldier holding out for 45 hours until help arrived. Later that year, he starred alongside McQueen, Charles Bronson, and James Garner in The Great Escape, a film based on the true story of World War II prisoners attempting to escape from a German prison camp. During the filming, James introduced McQueen to his passion for Ferrari cars. In 1964, Coburn appeared in The Americanization of Emily, which starred James Garner and Julie Andrews. He signed a seven-year contract with 20th Century Fox later that year. Also in 1964, James and his wife, Beverly, bought a large Moroccan mansion in Beverly Hills, where he was often seen with his favorite vehicles. In 1965, Coburn acted in Major Dundee, featuring Charlton Heston as a Union officer crossing the Mexican border to fight Apaches. By 1966, Coburn gained international fame as the master spy Derek Flint in Our Man Flint, where a mad scientist tries to blackmail the world with a weather machine. Flint was a parody of the popular James Bond films. Following Our Man Flint, Coburn became known as a close advisor to the president, rumored to have access to confidential information. In 1967, he produced the sequel In Like Flint, James received training from Bruce Lee on his back porch. After four years in 1971, James Coburn starred alongside Rod Steiger in the spaghetti western duck, You Sucker, which was set during the Mexican Revolution and filmed in Italy and Spain. In 1973, Coburn was in Durango, Mexico, filming Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. Coburn considered this his favorite role, where he played Pat Garrett and Chris Christopherson played Billy the Kid. He enjoyed the experience, especially because his 12-year-old son was with him and even appeared in a river scene. During the shoot, Coburn helped his close friend and director Sam Peckinpah, who was struggling with heavy drinking. Although Coburn managed to get Peckinpah sober, Peckinpah later became addicted to cocaine. Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid was released on July 20, 1973. Tragically, in the same year, Coburn's friend Bruce Lee, a martial arts expert, passed away suddenly at the age of 32 due to brain swelling, with the cause never being determined. Coburn attended Lee's funeral with Steve McQueen. In 1975, Coburn starred with Charles Bronson in Jill Ireland in Hard Times, a film about a bare-knuckle fighter during the Great Depression. On December 24, 1975, Coburn learned that his father, James Harrison II, had died at the age of 73. He was so affected by his father's death, but the next year after his father died in 1976, James Coburn was in Greece filming Skyriders with Robert Culp and Susanna York. The story involves a cup plate and industrialist whose family is kidnapped by terrorists, and Coburn's character, the ex-husband of one of the victims, comes to the rescue with gliders. During this time, James's wife Beverly unexpectedly flew to Greece and discovered his marital indiscretion, marking the start of their marriage's troubles. By the late 1970s, the Hollywood cocaine scene, which affected both James and Beverly, further strained their relationship. In 1977, Coburn starred in the World War II film Cross of Iron, directed by his friend Sam Peckinpah and co-starring Maximilian Schell. In 1978, James was paid $500,000 by Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company to say two words in a beer commercial. That same year, he moved to a bungalow in Sherman Oaks due to his separation from Beverly. Their divorce was finalized on April 12, 1979. During this period, James began a relationship with British singer-songwriter Lindsay DePaul and even helped write songs for her. By 1980, Coburn experienced sharp pain in his hand and was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, which doctors said would only worsen. On November 7, 1980, he learned that his close friend Steve McQueen had died of cancer at the age of 50. Coburn and McQueen had shared a long friendship and a love for fast cars. By 1981, Coburn's arthritis had significantly impacted his film career. In 1982, his relationship with Lindsay DePaul ended, but they remained friends. Two years later, on February 20, 1984, James's mother, Malik Johnson Coburn, passed away at the age of 83. After some years of his mother's death at the end of the 1980s, James Coburn had lost faith in doctors. His condition was so severe that even standing up would make him sweat. 
His hand was almost unusable, and his movement was severely limited. To manage his pain, Coburn began self-treating with deep tissue massages, electromagnetic treatments, and a sulfur-based compound called MSM. After nearly 10 years of suffering, his pain lessened enough for him to return to work. In March 1990, Coburn, Emilio Estevez, Lou Diamond Phillips, and Kiefer Sutherland completed filming Young Guns. Coburn played John Chisholm alongside Estevez as Billy the Kid. The following year in 1991, Coburn starred in the made-for-TV movie Silver Fox as a retired secret agent who keeps getting called back to solve cases. James had met actress Paula O'Hara at a party the year before and was impressed by her. They started spending a lot of time together, and Coburn helped her land a small role in Silver Fox. On October 22, 1993, Coburn married Paula at City Hall in Versailles, France. Paula was just shy of 38, while Coburn was 64. James was Paula's second husband, and she didn't have any children. Paula worked as a television personality. Three months after James and Paula married, James appeared as Commodore Duvall in the TV show Maverick with Mel Gibson, Jodie Foster, and James Garner. On April 1, 1994, James Coburn received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In 1996, James and Paula sold their Sherman Oaks home on Hollywood Avenue, which had a great room. That same year, James starred alongside Arnold Schwarzenegger and Vanessa Williams in the movie Eraser, where the witness protection program is threatened by an inside mole. Although Coburn felt his career was slowing down and his best work was behind him, he was surprised by what 1997 had in store. In the film Affliction, Coburn played the alcoholic, abusive father of Nick Nolte, a small-town sheriff in New Hampshire. Director Paul Schrader wanted Coburn for the role. Coburn did just that and won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. In 1999, at the 71st Oscar Award ceremony, James Coburn shared this thought and said that some movies are done for money and some are done for love. He called his award-winning movie A Love Child and dedicated it to his beautiful wife, Paula who finally got to attend the Oscars with him. For the next three years, Coburn stayed busy with various acting offers. He mentioned that winning an Oscar shows people you can act well. James loved martial arts, card playing, and Cuban cigars. Over his career, he appeared in over 70 films and around 100 TV shows. His peers respected him, and he had a memorable voice in the industry. In 2002, he was the voice for the Shiva commercial. On November 18, 2002, while resting at his Beverly Hills home with Paula and listening to his favorite music, James Coburn suffered a fatal heart attack. He passed away in his wife's arms at the age of 74. Less than two years later, Paula Coburn died from cancer on July 30, 2004, at the age of 40. Thanks for watching.